What's this hope? Hopey size. <laughs> there we go. Much better. <laughs> Thank you. I have a testimony. I'll just share quickly about it. Um, when we were leaving the building in um, PA, um, I was one of the last ones to leave only because I'm always waiting for Pearl. Where is she? You know? <laughs> and I'm older than her. Anyways, um, we were leaving and three young teenagers came in, a young girl and two guys, First Nations. And um, they said, um, is it over? And I said, yes, we're just all leaving. And I go, are you okay? And they said, we came to have prayer. And I said, oh, okay. And you could tell the girl was either on drugs or high on something. And the two, um, the one boy was suicidal. They were probably like 17, 18. And I said, well, let's pray for you. And I'm looking around, where's all the Indians? There was none to be found. They were <laughs> all hiding in the bush as usual, you know? <laughs> or at Goodwill or somewhere, you know? And so I got some of the security, I said, hey guys, come here. And so um, they came and eventually the Indians showed up and we just surrounded these three young people and we just prayed for them. And the girl had a deliverance, she was getting slain there right in the foyer and the two other young men, we led them to the Lord. So all three of them came to the Lord and we said, come back, you know, tonight and we'll, pray for you again you know they didn't come back but I believe God did what he was going to do so isn't that amazing yeah. I mean we have to be ready in season and out of season so that was an amazing thing in Prince Albert so let's pray I'll pray in Cree then I'll pray in English Pituti, it's awesome, Miss Agogi Pigo, Gidagio Sia, Gidamina Gitipi the Minan. Come, Lord Jesus, come. By the power and the unction of your Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place tonight. We love you, Lord. And we are made in your image. We, your children, wait upon you. We are made in your image. And in you, we live and move and have our being. There is none like you in the heavens above and in the earth below. You alone are God. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done in this night, this time that we have with you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We serve a great and awesome God, don't we? It was so beautiful this evening as we were driving, and I'm just going to read a scripture uh, just the Lord gave me as I was coming here. Always thank white man for iPhone, glasses, <laughs> microphone, all the good stuff. When I go overseas, they always ask, so do you still live in a teepee? I go, yeah, and I have Wi-Fi, too. So, you know, it's so funny. And they'll always ask, are you a real Indian? And I go, yes, I am. Watch, pinch me, and I'll scream. So, Psalm 19 says, and I just was looking, you know, you could tell there was snow in the clouds, and the sun was just coming down. It was so beautiful, and I thought, wow, I love British Columbia. I know... You guys always talk about BC, you know, and it means bring cash, right? So thank God I have American money. So, so Psalm 19 says, this is still low for me, but it'll work. No. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. The heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship. Day and night, they keep on telling about God. Without a sound or word, silent in the skies, their message reaches out to all the world. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, the sun lives in the heavens where God placed it and moves out across the skies as radiant as a bridegroom going to his wedding. 
He's coming for his bride, isn't he, without spot or wrinkle. Man, I could use a bit of Botox. No, just kidding. <laughs> or, as a jo or as joyous as an athlete looking forward to a race. The sun crosses the heavens from end to end, and nothing can hide from its heat. Well, it was a little cold today. It was uh, 90 degrees the other day, yesterday actually in Texas, where I live, eh? No. Hee-haw, it's hee-haw right now. God's laws are perfect. They protect us, make us wise. Some of us need a lot more of that. And give us joy and light. God's laws are pure, eternal, just. They are more desirable than gold. They are sweeter than honey dripping from a honeycomb. For they warn us, they warn us away from harm and give success to those who obey them. That's why it's so important to walk in obedience, amen? But how can I ever know what sins are lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults and keep me from deliberate wrongs. Help me to stop doing them. Only then can I be free of guilt and innocent of some great crime. May my spoken words and unspoken thoughts be pleasing even to you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? I just thought how beautiful the skies were and the snow. And Pearl and I were snowed in for a few days. Some of us got sick in PA just probably because it was so hot in that church <laughs> you know it was a flu don't worry I'm not infectious I think it was just a flu just being run down and uh, you know God is good he raises us up on the third day amen we'll be down for a bit but then we're raised back up he is Jehovah Rapha our healer and by his stripes we are healed amen don't listen to what your body tells you because it lies all the time. I mean, I feel like 16, but I know I don't look 16. So, But I just continue to declare that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen? Amen. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. Amen? And he teacheth our hands to war and my fingers to do battle. Amen? I tell people I speak four languages. Cree, French, English, and tongues. And I speak tongues the most, even in my sleep sometimes. I'm like, what did I say, Lord? Did I really say that? <laughs> he is good. So I grew up in Saskatchewan, Canada. I'm Cree. So I tell people, God is Cree, you know. He's called Creator. So just so you know. I grew up in the bush in um, Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan, a little village of about 300 when I was growing up. And so we uh, spoke Korean French at home. I learned English in school. And we were very po, so there was only one O in it because we were so po. We actually used the neighbor's outhouse because we didn't even own one. My father was a trapper, and so he traded with Hudson's Bay Company. Um, he would go on the trap line. Sometimes he would be gone for weeks at a time. And, you know, we didn't ha own a clock. He didn't have a watch. But he'd say, if I'm not back by the 12th of January, by midnight, you come looking for me. And so he'd be on the trap line by himself. He was tough. And so my brother would start panicking. You know, it'd be like 1130. He'd start to hitch up the dog sled team. And I'd help him, I'd pack his backpack and put some food in there and tea and everything and he'd start just getting them dogs hitched up and then five minutes to 12, my father would <laughs> you know, show up at the door. He'd just be covered in ice, you know? My brother would be like, oh. And life was tough up north. It's Almost in the Northwest Territories, we're actually the last village between the border of Manitoba and Saskatchewan. And you ask, how did I end up in Texas? Well, <laughs> I just moved there just um, maybe two months ago. 
yeah, maybe not quite two months ago. And yesterday a tornado happened in my territory. I live in uh, Paris, Paris, Texas, that is. <laughs> and there was a tornado just two miles from my, my place that I just bought. So whew, I didn't know. Pearl and I were up all night praying. We didn't understand why, but um, some friends phoned me and said, guess what? Sent me, you know, clips of the tornado touching down just <laughs> a few, few blocks from my house. So, But all is good. Amen. No matter what we go through, God is with us. And you know, I always tell people, what we go through, our pain, the stuff we go through, that's our currency in heaven, isn't it? It's our currency in heaven, so I am rich. I could tell you story after story of what I've gone through. And just even growing up in the res, you know, during the whole 60s scoop even, they came for us in our village, we, our village, you could only fly in and out. There were no roads in or out. So the bush plane would come in and some government officials would literally just be dropped off and they'd just grab kids off the road, the dirt road that is, and they'd throw them on the plane and never to be seen again. And sometimes they would come back, but they were totally different. They weren't who they left, who they were when they left. So it was hard. And um, they came for us and my father, you know, with all his guns and equipment, they thought he was at work. They came one day and uh, he shot at them. You know, he had a gun ready, he was hiding. They didn't know he was home, so he scared them off. And that was my first time I saw people do the Pentecostal hop, you know, <laughs> as they ran off. But he knew they would come back, so he took us probably a four days journey by boat um, down the river, and we lived off the land for many years. And so I learned how to um, hunt and fish and skin animals, and my father was a trapper, so he taught me how to skin beaver pelts, and my job was snaring rabbits and, uh, you know, cooking the rabbit, yum. <laughs> Ducks, duck eggs, yum. <laughs> and so, you know, it was, it was a tough life, especially in the winter, because we had um, a lot of snow up there. I remember one, I think when I was maybe 12, I was walking past my knees in snow with my birthday cake, trying to balance that thing with snowshoes on, you know. <laughs> And life was tough, but it was also very good. It was fun. And, um, you know, God was with me. I grew up Catholic, of course, in every reservation. You find a, a lot of these little Catholic churches and went to a Catholic uh, boarding school, or I guess you would call it day school. So I really learned um, about God and faith growing up. So. Grew up Catholic, got saved in a Baptist church, just so you know, I did get saved in a Baptist church. <laughs> got water baptized in a Pentecostal church, then I became a Baptocostal, and then um, got spirit-filled in a four-square church, got ordained in an all-denominational church, and let's see, did I miss anything? <laughs> But I always tell people, you know, they've been trying to cast the Indian out of us for 400 years, and I'm still here. <laughs> and believe it or not, you could be an Indian and a Christian at the same time. Amen? And that's what God did in me. I grew up, you know, as a Native American uh, person in, in my village, but we didn't learn anything about, we didn't have powwows all that kind of stuff, you know? We just learned to survive, basically. And so I left home at 15, ran away from home, and um, didn't get saved till I was 26, partied all the way. No, just kidding. <laughs> and so, um, you know, went to college, the whole kit and caboodle, had many careers, and, you know, became a, gosh, a teacher, a, flight attendant, an actress, I mean, I did it all. 
I was accepted in the police academy as well, modeled. I did the whole shebang. When you're this old, you have many careers, you know, <laughs> right? How many of you have more than one career, right? Yay. <laughs> and I just retired a couple years ago, and I was living in Seattle. My kids are there. We're leaving tomorrow, actually, after I minister at Pearl's Church, and we're heading to Seattle. and. Uh, my little grandson likes to call me. I have a three-year-old grandson and an eight-year-old granddaughter. I have two daughters that live in Seattle. And so he called me while we were out and about, and uh, he likes to FaceTime me. He'll call me. He'll go, Kukum, you want to FaceTime? And, of course, I'm trying to figure out, you know, <laughs> electronically. They, they know everything. And I said, hey, how you doing? And he starts crying. And he says, I just miss you, Kukum. Kukum means grandma in Cree. And I was thinking about when Heather was just sharing about just our relationship with the Lord. And I just had a quick picture of the Lord saying that to us. I miss you. Because that's what he wants. He wants relationship with us. It's not about performance. It's not about experience but it's about presence amen he wants relationship with us he wants to spend time with us and you could do that anywhere anytime and he's with us wherever we go whatever we do in him I live and move and have my being you know sometimes we wait for the anointing you know give me a zap Lord so I can go you know Go speak to this guy and lead them to the Lord, just like he was sharing. But he's with us all the time. Just a couple weeks ago, I was ministering in uh, California on the Saboba Reservation. There were about two, 300 youth, and I was flying back, and um, I was just sitting there minding my own business, and there was this young man, military guy, high-ranking, but just uh, had retired recently, just um, had a lot to share, let me tell you. But he was into everything, Kabbalah, New Age, I mean, just everything. So I saw this book he was reading, uh, Tom Horn, a book by Tom Horn. I'm, so I said to him, oh, so I see you're a seeker. You're looking for knowledge, you know. So we start talking. I mean, we talked the whole two-hour trip, and I led him to the Lord. So, whew. so we could do that all the time, no matter where you are. Amen? You don't wait for the Almighty zap, because in him we live and move and have our being. He's with us. As long as we want to be with him, as long as we want to have that relationship with him all the time. You know, sometimes people think I'm crazy because I'm walking in the grocery store, going to Starbucks or whatever, and I'm just talking to the Lord. I'm like, I'm shopping. I'm like, what do you think about this, Lord? Is this really nice, you know? Because he's my husband. He's my father. And he's my best friend. Recently, I... I was married. I had been a widow for 16 years. I was married for 22 years, my kids' father. And then I became a widow for 16 years. And then just maybe six months ago, I got married to a pastor, evangelist, prophet. I married the fivefold ministry. <laughs> it was amazing. And uh, he passed. We were only married five months. So, but it's good. You know, God turns everything around for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen. And I know I'll be okay. I can say it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is No matter what you go through, God is with you. As long as I know he loves me, I love him because he 
first loved me, then I know it's going to be okay. And I was obedient to what he called me to do. I wasn't planning on getting married. We knew each other, and we'd see each other on YouTube or a big event somewhere, you know. And I would just say hi to him. He was a widower for six years. I was a widow for 16, so I told him, don't mess with me. I have more experience. <laughs> and um, I remember he came to visit me in Alabama. I, was, I had just retired, and I was over there just retiring, <laughs> riding horses, doing prayer journeys on horseback, and just having a great time. And uh, I wasn't planning to live there, but you know when you follow him and he leads you, you it's, it's a big adventure. You never know where you're going to end up, <laughs> you know, what you're going to be doing or where you're going to be living for that matter. And so um, I went there and we had started talking on the phone. I actually had three surgeries and I was really sick and I actually died. They overdosed me with fentanyl 10 times over. And I remember I was going and of course I was really excited. I'm like, yes, I'm going home. <laughs> you know how many of you wouldn't be, right? I was really excited. I'm going down. And I'm thinking, man, the light is coming. I'm so excited at total peace. And then next thing, I'm being slapped around. <laughs> I was coming in and out of consciousness. And um, I knew it was the enemy. But remember, if it's not your time, it's not your time. Amen. My life is in his hands. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. If it's not your time, it's not your time. And I knew then it wasn't my time. And of course, I was a little disappointed because <laughs> I wanted to go home. You know, I, I was ready. I was ready to meet my maker. But it wasn't my time. And so, um, so Larry kept calling me and he would just pray with me over the phone. We never dated. He lived in California. I was living in Seattle at the time. So he would just call me and pray with me every day, but he had a plan. Well, him and God had a plan. <laughs> Actually, everybody knew it except me. His whole church were praying, and his family were praying, and all these other international people were praying. Talk about, you know, the word of God that says, who is this blind but my prophets whom I send, you know, was like, whew, you know. I was way over my head. I had no idea. And so he came to visit me in Alabama. He drove from California. Well, he had a plan. So anyway, um, he actually was coming to ask me to marry him. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Can we go on a date or something at least? You know, I don't know you. <laughs> so I said, wait a minute. Let me process this like I knew he was going to ask me. Finally, ding, ding, the lights went on. And so he went to visit his family in Georgia, so he gave me four days to think about it. Four days. Talk about panic, you know. And here I broke every rule in my own book, you know, as a counselor and as a behavioral specialist. I'd be like, no, you need a year. You will know the man after four or five months. Don't make any decisions. Four days. So I didn't know the man. So I asked the Lord. I said, okay, God, I, re I really need a quick answer here because I know he's coming back to ask me. And I don't need to get married. I'm happy. It's just you and me, you know. It's like, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so the Lord began speaking to me actually and he said just like when Isaac sent his servant to ask Rebecca to marry him she never met him and um, she didn't know anything about him she left everything and he said I'm teaching my end time remnant bride how to be obedient in these last days because it's going to be a matter of life and death. And so I said yes. 
not knowing that five months later he would pass. But I was obedient to the call. And it's important. We had five months of ministry. We were home three weekends out of five months. We were doing ministry. Souls were getting saved. People were getting baptized. I mean, we traveled all over. And God did such a quick and an incredible work. So I want to encourage you, you know, do what he tells you to do. Seek his heart fast and pray. If he tells you to do it, do it. I love the Nike logo. I'm not crazy about Nike, but just the logo. Just do it. Amen? Just do it. Because he is teaching us how to be obedient. He's teaching us how to totally be so in love with him that you'll abandon all and you will say yes. And I know sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. But he's with us. He's for us. Amen? And he'll lead us and guide us not only into all truth, but he's not going to steer us this way. He's going to show us where to walk. We follow his footsteps, right? He leads us and guides us. So back to my story, <laughs> growing up on the res. So when I left home, you know, it took years. I left at 15, ran away from home, and uh, lived in the cities, went to high school, went to university. I went to high school in Prince Albert. I think I told you that. So. I haven't been there since I was 15. So I was there. I was like, whoa, you know. It's, isn't that something how God brings us full circle? He brings us full circle. And it was so wonderful to see one of my sisters. I have three older sisters. And she came from uh, La Ronge, And she just had fun. Man. You, did you see her dancing? She was she had her eyes closed. You know, it's amazing to me. She's like 74. She'll have her eyes closed the whole time, just dancing, and she won't bump into anybody. She's about this short. <laughs> I'm the tallest one in the family. But here's another story. Before I was born, my mother um, was pregnant, eight months pregnant with me and all my siblings. I'm the youngest. And we were living off the land, and my father was out trapping, and um, he was gone. It was a harsh winter, and so he had been gone two weeks already. She was getting worried. We were actually starving. It was a really harsh winter. She said she went and dug in the snow trying to find berries or roots or something. She couldn't find anything. So she told my siblings, I'm going to go to the nearest village, which was about 25, 30 miles, you know, by foot, snowshoes. And she said, I need to get help. She said she lined up my siblings from oldest to youngest. I, I had the best seat in the house. I was in her tummy. <laughs> and she lined them up, and she said they were just writhing in pain from hunger. And she said, I'm going to go get help because who knows what happened to your dad. Maybe he was you know, eaten by wolves or fell through the ice. We don't know what happened. So she got, got up early in the morning, got the snowshoes, the backpack, you know, blanket, matches, whatever, and she started trekking. And she said she went um, across a frozen lake and the sun was starting to just go down a little bit, you know, over the hills. So. She thought, man, I don't know if I'll make it. I'm going to have to camp. And she looked across the frozen river, and she saw these dots just coming from across the lake. And she thought, oh, maybe they're people. And she realized it was a pack of wolves coming straight for her. So she kicked off those snowshoes, and she just ran for the tree line, she said. And they were coming close. She could hear them howling. And so she ran straight to the tallest tree she could find and being eight months pregnant you know she just booted it and just ran up to the tallest tree climbed that tree if 
found the biggest branch she could and just sat up there and had a rope, pulled the rope out of her backpack and tied herself to the tree limb. And she was there all night. So, you know, if she fell asleep, then, you know, she wouldn't fall off. And she said the wolves were all around the bottom of the tree just howling and trying to get at her, but they couldn't. And she prayed and prayed real hard. And um, she said eventually she must have fallen asleep. And uh, she said the sun was warming her face and she woke up. The sun was just coming up. And she started trying to move around. The wolves were gone. And, and uh, you know, she had some hypothermia and I hadn't moved in hours. So she thought I probably, you know, had hypothermia as well or I was gone. And she said she saw these dots across the frozen river again and she thought the frozen lake and she thought oh no they're coming back for me and then she realized it was a father and a son checking their trap line so she started yelling and yelling at them and they were coming closer and they heard her so they came and uh, took her down rescued her took the, took her to their uh, campsite and um, you know gave her hot tea and started putting warm towels on her belly and warmed her up and she said after about an hour I started moving so here I am today <laughs> so just to say you know if it's not your time it's not your time amen God has a plan and a purpose for each one of you plans for good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope and our hope is in him amen our hope is in Christ Jesus here's another story my father and mother eventually separated and uh, there was alcohol and you know poverty it all kind of just flows together doesn't it when you don't have Christ and so my uh, father was at work one day. They had been split up, separated, and my mother came back for me one day and kidnapped me, took me away. Then the man she was with, obviously, you know, was an alcoholic, abused her, and he didn't want me around, so they dumped me somewhere along the way to, uh, I think it was his uncle. And so my father didn't find out till a lot later. And he searched for me for two years. He would send a snowmobile in the winter, dog sled team in the winter. Nobody knew where I was. The people I was with were, um, they, he was a commercial fisherman. And um, so nobody really knew they, because where they work is they moved around, moved around from camp to camp. In the summer, he'd send a bush plane and a canoe, and nobody knew where I was. This family came from another village, and um, they said, hey, we know. I think we know where she is, because she doesn't look anything like them. She's really tall. <laughs> they were a short tribe. Anyway, so um, my father said, well, can you find her? Do you know where this camp is? And they said, yes, we know where this camp is. So my father bought them groceries, a new motor, gasoline, Starbucks card, <laughs> and sent them off down the river. And uh, <laughs> Art's laughing at that one. Yes, Starbucks. We didn't have Walmart then, Hudson's Bay. So Hudson's Bay blanket, you know, spam, BLTs. In, in Cree country, a BLT is bannock, lard, and tea. So they gave, he gave some of that to them. <laughs> Moose meat, and off they went down the river. And they found me. I was at this fishing camp, and... Uh, my father would have a glass of whiskey after I came back and he'd tell me this story over and over again and I'd be like, here we go again, you know. And he'd sit at the edge of my bed and tell me the story and he'd just weep and weep and I'd be like, oh my gosh, how many times do I have to hear this story? You know? <laughs> but it was a good story. 
of how God saved me and how my daddy loved me so much that he would spend all that time and money to find me. And that's how Father looks at us. He will go to and fro. He will send many people to come labors across our path to bring us to himself because he wants to have a relationship with us because he loves his children eventually you know I, I was okay I turned out okay I'm sure I went through a lot of trauma we all do but he's healer he's counselor you know I never went to counseling so I, I'm okay really ask Art ask Heather Ask Pearl. <laughs> because I read the word that said he is counselor. He is mighty God, counselor, Prince of Peace. I saw that word, <gasps> counselor, yes. So I had these counseling sessions with him, and he began to heal me and to restore me of all the, of all the trauma that I went through. And then I saw this other scripture. It said, as for me and my house. So I began to pray for my family, for my siblings. And within a year after I got saved, I led them all to the Lord. My family, my siblings, my parents, my nephews and nieces. So his word is literal. Amen? It goes out and it doesn't return void. As you speak it forth, as you prophesy, I always tell people it's not how good you can pray and how loud you could shout and bind this and bind that. It's how much word goes into that prayer. Amen? How much word goes into that prayer because it will not return void. And let's begin to take his word literally for what it really is. It's truth. It's living, it's powerful and sharper than in a two-edged sword, amen? My sword actually uh, arrived yesterday just before the storm hit, Heather. So they sent it by mail and engraved it. But it made me think of his sword. Living, powerful, cuts both ways. We can't live without this. This is life, the living Bible. It's alive. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God is so good. He has set my feet a dancing. He has turned my mourning into joy. It says, Behold, may, mourning may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know what? He's restoring the joy of our salvation. Amen? He doesn't, you know, we shouldn't be like the saddest looking people, the, the most oppressed. We should be the happiest people, no matter what we go through. Amen? Because we will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. I could tell you stories all night of the stuff I've gone through. I could. But you know what? <laughs> That's not important. The important thing is I have overcome. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to go through more. I'm going to go through more. I know that. But I know he loves me. I know he loves me. And when you know he loves you, you can do anything. You can do anything because you know you're going to be okay because daddy loves you. And he's going to take care of you. He's going to watch over you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to give you peace. He's going to give you comfort. Because he's a good, good daddy. He's a good, good father. And he loves you so much. He loves you so much. No matter where I go. I'm leaving for Belgium shortly in, in about a week. No matter where I go, Ireland, Scotland, wherever it is, Philippines, you know, the human heart is the same. We all hurt. We all go through betrayal, disappointment. The 
greatest of these is love. And I know that you're going to be okay if you know he loves you. It's just like a child. They fall down and they get hurt. And they go running to their parent. And then the parent comforts them and loves them. They make a mess and the parent still loves them. No matter what your child does, no matter how old they, they are, mine are like 40 and 38, 37. Thank God I only have two. can't remember. <laughs> no matter what they've done, it's like I'm going to love them anyway. I may get mad. I might, you know, say things that I might regret. But they know I love them. And I tell them all the time, he loves us so much. And tonight I want to just release that upon you. Everywhere I travel, I tell you, people just want a touch of touch from him his love to overwhelm them and you could say I'm going to be okay I'm going to be okay and our human love is not good enough for all the hurt that's out there and all the pain and trauma you see it every day our human love ain't going to cut it just like Jesus, he was overcome with compassion because he got his love from his Father. It goes from here to there. Because our human love's not good enough. It judges. It condemns. It's conditional. just going to call out some, some things the Lord was showing me when I came in. There's some marriages that need to be healed. We need to choose love. Choose forgiveness. There's marriages that need to be healed and restored. God wants to pour out his love upon your heart so that you could say, I choose to love. There's people that need healing. There's backs, there's knees. There's a, somebody sprained an ankle that they're having pain and swelling in their ankles from a from an old injury. I see at least six car accidents where there's pain. Just start coming up as I call these things out. There's about five people that are struggling with diabetes. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. By his stripes, we are healed. It's easy to get that healing, but it's another thing to maintain it to stand and believe that you are healed because the enemy always comes to contest right but God is greater his word is greater we just have to stand firm in our faith knowing that he is God And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. There's some that are struggling financially. There's a few men right now looking for a job. Just come up here. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he will supply your every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There's two couples that need a home 
that are looking for a home. God gave me this house, just boom, it happened so quickly. I, I've only been there two months. Texas is not somewhere I was even thinking to go, but the Holy Spirit led me there because it's only 15 minutes to the Oklahoma border. And that's, I've been doing a lot of stuff there lately. There's some, of, there's some families here that actually have uh, kids and a nephew I see that are struggling with addiction. God wants to bring healing and restoration. Come. There's nothing to be ashamed of because none of us are righteous. Our righteousness are as filthy rags. It says we all need Jesus. We need him. Can we just say that? Jesus, I need you. I need you to heal me. I need you to restore me. I need you to bring the joy of my salvation. To bring me joy once again. Holy Spirit, come. Kinto mit na ni manto ang tapitut yan. Kida po kagip matinan. Kida des kagiusiyak. Kisagi na ni maniton. Kitsa sa misaguagos siya. Kida po kagip matinan manto. Kida des kagiusiyak. Hallelujah. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Machadesh. Hallelujah. Ki Aradaki. Let's just start praying in tongues. Ki Anana Kohori Aradaki Aradaki Aradamaha Yadadaki. Hey, Anana Kohori Aradaki Aradamaha Yadadaki. Hey, Anana Kohori Aradaki. Hey, Ananaki, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Astam Timitz, Ke Ananakor, Ke Ananaki, I'm just going to start praying. You don't have to tell me what you're going through. God knows. I called those things out. So I'm going to start praying if I can have a few catchers. Thank you. Thank you. Come, come, O oh breath of God, and breathe upon your children that they may live and live more abundantly. Overwhelm them with your love, the love of the Father, that they will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. For they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And no weapon formed against them shall prosper because they are yours. They are yours. Your children, Lord. And they belong to you. Hey, Anna, no kohori, da 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 maha, da 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 ki, da da ki, da Hey, Anna, no kohori, da da ki, da da ki, da da maha, da da ki, da da ki, da da ki. Hey, hey, Anna, no kohori, da da ki. Hey, Anna, no kohori, da da ki. More love, more love, more power, more of you in her life, Lord. Thank you for this woman of intercession, Father, that she will pray without ceasing. You will wake her in the night to pray, Father God, and she will see the fruit of her prayers. Hallelujah. Worship, worship, worship. 
worship. I will send you to the high places, says the Lord. And you will break that ground, that follow ground. You will begin to break it where, wherever I send you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Dance with all your might, even as David danced, says the Lord fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit will come upon you as you dance in my might, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And you will, you will begin to see things break, 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 breaker, breaker, anointing, breaker, anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Your season is over, says the Lord. And joy will come. Joy will come. Hey, 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 where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And liberty is coming to you and your house. Liberty is coming to those that come around you, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For I have put freedom in your spirit. Freedom in your spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will bring forth much in your prayer and intercession, says the Lord. You will bring forth much in this season. And I will give you strength to bring forth the sons and daughters that are coming, says the Lord. They are the prophetic generation coming for this hour, says the Lord. That will bring freedom and deliverance. And I have put it in your spirit, says the Lord. Come, 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 come forth, O daughter of Zion. Come forth, I will give you strength and I will stand with you, says the Lord. And I will strengthen you. Hallelujah. The betrayals, even Lord, no more, no more, no more. In the name of Jesus, rejoice, O oh daughter of Zion, rejoice. I am with you and for you, says the Lord. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper, says the Lord. I have written your name in my hand, says the Lord. You are mine. You are mine. You are mine. Do not fear, for I am with you to will and to do for my good pleasure. Yield yourself to me. Yield more and more. Receive you as my own, says the Lord. No more rejection. No more. We break every yoke of bondage off you. Every burden that is not of Him, we break in the name of Jesus Christ. For His burden is light and His yoke is easy. More love, more love, more love, more power, more of you in her life, Lord. 
Heal her heart, Lord. Heal every disappointment. Every rejection has to go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. There it is. Just receive his love. Just receive it. He loves you. He receives you, accepts you because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You are loved. Fire. The fire of his love. Thank you for his obedience. Thank you for his love for his fellow man. I see the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ in this man. He's quick to help, quick to give. Father, bless, bless him a hundredfold where he's given. The law of reaping and sowing, he's sown so much, Lord. Now I pray this season he will reap in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Healing, 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 restoration, restoration where she has lost father give her back sevenfold the enemy has to restore sevenfold in the name of jesus christ and we can even go back seven generations people seven generations back amen we speak strength to these feeble knees we say be strong in the His might. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. For the word of the living God says so. 